All right, back in the shop. Our facing piece has uh, set, the glue set. So I'm gonna remove these four screws, flush cut this uh, spline off on both sides, and then we'll mark the arc on it that we uh, cut on the band saw. mark for a semicircle on this. Okay, I've got um, our piece laid out on top of the Luna table where I've marked the circumference that we want to have. And I got our beam compass kind of laid out so that I can get uh, 12 and 3 quarter inches. That's the inside measurement. It meets up right flush with the edge here. So I'm okay with that. So I'm going to mark that line, that arc. And then our 13 and a quarter line, or 13 and a half rather. Unfortunately, that line is going right smack through the uh, splines. <clears throat> so I think what I'll be doing is I'll be cutting about an eighth of an inch beyond this 13 and a quarter line, 13 and a half rather. So I've marked that reasonably well. We'll take it over to the bandsaw and cut the outside and then we'll cut the inside arc. All right, we're about to embark on a fairly significant cut here. So two cuts actually all the way around. Get on the dust collector and away we go. So I came across a nail in this cut, buried deep in there. Can't really see it, but it's in there. So I'm going to try and punch that out using a little piece of rod. Let me get set up and we'll show you how I go about doing that. So I have this piece straddled over the vise. The hole from the other end of this is uh, in the opening. drive that very rusty nail to any point where it can be grabbed and I can see it over here not sure if I'm making any movement but we'll I'll keep going a little bit Yeah, 
Maybe we can get it by with some pliers here. Let me just see what I can do. All right, I'll be back in just a second with uh, some other techniques. So I used a uh, plug cutter to cut around that uh, nail <clears throat> and that gives me just enough room to get in here with some cutters and I can pull that out. There's our culprit. So let's resume on the bandsaw. Interesting enough, this is actually a square nail indicating the age of that, uh, that piece of wood that we've got is turn of the century. Alright, that represents our outside cut. Now we'll do the inside cut. All right, <clears throat> there's our piece. So <clears throat> it appears that striking a nail with a bandsaw is bad. Uh, certainly seems to dull the blade a bit. So I'm gonna have to sharpen that up. And uh, a couple little uh, odd spots throughout on this surface which I think I will just be sanding out uh, rather than put this on the arcs uh, to get that perfect curve. I think on this piece, we're gonna be okay with a little bit, uh, a couple anomalies, but uh, sanding this out should make this fine. This is pine, so it'll sand relatively easily. Uh, plus, obviously, you can tell there's lots of holes in here and stuff and imperfections that need to be corrected anyway. So a lot of sanding is gonna be required on this piece to begin with. But let's set it up on the top now to see how we match the curve. As we look in here, that's the line that we're trying to follow. And we are really close all the way around. A little bit of adjustment, so I'm gonna call that good. The more important um, view is from the outside because it's that outside edge that we're trying to stay back a little bit from. I'm pleased with that result. If I was going for a factory kind of look, I would run this through the arcs to make this perfectly uh, circular. But as I mentioned before, that's that's not the intent on this one. So, some uh, sanding will work on this. So the next step on our little uh, demi luna table will be filling in, uh, putting in wood filler in all the holes. So I got a number of holes to fill here in this top, or the face that we uh, just cut on the bandsaw, and a number of holes that I need to fill in on both sides of the top. As it turns out, the second thing that I made here, which was going to be a shelf, I'm not going to make a shelf. Actually, we're going to make a second Demi Luna table. So we'll have two tables made out of this uh, one pallet. Uh, so I'll get on with some wood filler. I'll show you a little bit of that, and then 
I'll probably cut halfway through or part way through because that's a little boring. just found a second nail that we went all the way through with the bandsaw so that blade is going to be in some serious trouble it wasn't anything uh, caught on the front side but it just picked it up on the back side realizing too <clears throat> since this is a semicircular table I probably don't need to worry about the holes way out on the extreme edges here as I mentioned before this table is getting painted so um, having the uh, holes filled with this is not going to be a problem Okay, we can let that uh, <clears throat> set up to dry. Next thing we're going to work on is going to be the legs. Uh, squaring them up true and tapering them. So, I'll bring those over to the table saw and we'll talk about what we're going to do there. Alright, the first operation when it comes to these legs is cutting them to length. It's going to be 28 and a half inches long and I want to pick the best 28 and a half inches out of these pieces so clearly you can see where we have this carved out here that's that's going to be cut off uh, similarly on this piece I got a bad end up here so we'll cut that off and I have a bad piece down here so we'll cut that off also if I can avoid these nail holes and stuff I'll, I'll cut that off so Taking the best 28 and a half inches out of these pieces and then we'll run them through the saw to cross cut them. And I'm going to allow an extra quarter of an inch on this so that I can trim them all together and get them exactly the same length. So I'm going to cut these uh, where the marks are, that's a quarter inch longer than I need and when I have all the faces uh, true, cleaned up, I'll clamp them together and cut off that quarter inch. cleaning up these faces. Set the fence up to be one and three eighths.
Okay, that's our <coughs> legs squared. I'm happy with that. Next, uh, we'll be tapering the legs. And these legs, <coughs> just gonna draw on this leg to show you what we have in mind. So the legs are gonna come down, uh, the, fundamentally the width of the uh, top, or as far as the top and the face together. Then there'll be a little groove cut. Can't see what I'm doing. There'll be a little uh, groove cut all the way around. And then the taper begins from here to the foot. And that taper, we're, we're currently at one and three eighths at the top. So I'm gonna go down to a three quarter inch foot. Um, and it'll uh, taper on all four sides. So on previous tables, you've seen me taper the leg in two dimensions. And when I'm using the Bedwell uh, router lathe, making a round one, of course, it's tapered in all dimensions. But this is the first time I'm taking a square leg and tapering it in four places. Which means I need to create a little bit of a jig to hold the leg <coughs> on a sled as it goes through. Uh, so I'm going to work on setting that up now. All right, here's the leg tapering jig. So I have a piece of particle board <coughs> that was just some scrap material I had lying around. Cut it to seven inches wide. The width is really relevant. And then I um, put the leg on here and determined where this leg needs to be in order to get, first of all, the cut to finish right here so as it uh, I want I don't want the blade penetrating the leg beyond that point but I do want it to be um, 5 16th of an inch on this end taking off that bit and five so that's the taper we're out by 5 16th of an inch so I have a little piece of wood that I have oops sorry let's go here so I got a little piece of wood that I tacked onto the base at the proper angle and I've put a stop here on the end so the leg will be butt up tight against this and snuck up against that and then clamp down with that bolt. And I also put a clamp down at the other end which is going to be good as long as I'm doing the uh, square sides or the, without any taper but as soon as I want to cut the taper I'll have to insert a wedge underneath here 5 sixteenths of an inch give or take but we'll sort that out in fact we can probably use an off cut from here to slip underneath there so with that made I'm going to make the first cut let's see how this works So I'm now going to flip this over 180 degrees and do the other taper on that side and then we'll worry about propping up this sledge. Well, I've got a bit of an issue here. Um, my line is not accurate enough to tell me exactly where that's where this edge is supposed to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in a piece that has not been cut and I can measure where that outside edge is supposed to be. What I want to know is the distance from this edge to this outside edge and then I can always make sure that the piece is lined up there. So I'm just going to measure that. Then when I set this tapered piece in, I can draw a line where the tapered edge would be.
Okay, so I have this now, this leg set, should give me three quarters here. Let's, let's see how this works. What could possibly go wrong? Okay, so that's giving me the taper that I'm looking for there. That's good. And we'll just do the other two edges. This will require some propping up underneath the taper though, so I'll figure that part out. Okay, I'm happy that um, this very end is flat. <coughs> so it's propping up here as I expect it to, so that's good. And I do have the line that I want, that's good, I'm following the first edge. So I'm just going to get a wedge that I can slip underneath here so I can clamp that down. Okay, another cut. And there we have a nicely tapered leg. That worked out very well. Quite happy with that. Okay, two more legs to go. Doing it again on a, the second uh, Demi Loon table. By the way, I've been calling it Demi Luna. It's Demi Loon. So I changed the, uh, in fact, on the first part one of this series, I, the thumbnail is incorrectly Debbie, uh, Demi Luna, although the title, I changed the title to Demi Loon. So forgive me for that little faux pas. And we'll uh, be calling it Demi Loon from this point on. All right, three legs cut. Uh, next piece, next thing to do will be cutting the top to shape and then we'll be doing some sanding on the facing. Anyway, I just thought I'd stop for a second and just show you the uh, savings that we made by uh, this method of cutting the round uh, face of the cabinet. These are the, this is the waste off cut, so not nearly as significant as what I was doing using the previous method of gluing kind of two by fours face to face. So significantly better uh, use of material. Just thought I'd pass that along. All right, so preparing to cut the circular portion of the top or make a circular cut, I've got my little jig 
semicircular jig here that I'm just going to tack onto the top and then I can mount that onto the bandsaw, my circle cutting template gizmo, and we'll cut that out. So first I'll tack this to here. Okay, temporary purchase made there. Uh, I'm gonna need to adjust the band, so I'll pull it out a little bit, but I'll set you up when I'm ready to film this part. All right, we're ready to uh, cut the top for the demi loom table. And I recognize I'm using my bandsaw blade that has been compromised by a nail or two. But this is fairly thin material, relatively speaking, so I'm okay. I think we'll be fine to cut it. I do need to sharpen that blade though. So I have this nail. So this is inside the curve of our facing component and I've debated whether to take it out or not. And I'm gonna take it out. And I use my little plug cutter technique. Uh, this time I'll use the drill press to get it out. But from the face of it, there was no evidence of that nail whatsoever. It's probably right behind there, but clearly didn't come through. I should have seen it from the other side, but I didn't. And the fact that it doesn't come all the way through means that it's in, I must be just the tail end of the nail here. So I think we have a good chance of getting it out without causing too much damage. So we'll go over to the drill press, get you set up and we'll try the plug cutter technique here. That gives us just enough uh, room that we can see the nail. We should be able to pull that out with the cutters like we did on the last one. Let me go set up for that. There we are. Just a tiny bit of the nail, but we got it. Okay, so we'll uh, fill that hole up. And then uh, we'll do a little bit of sanding on the top. This should be set by then and we can do some sanding on this piece. Okay, moving on to some sanding. I'm just gonna use my little palm sander with some 80 grit paper to go over the surface of the table. I'll flip it over to the underside, to primarily on the underside, just uh, focusing on the edge. I will do, cover the whole thing, but I wanna focus on the edge where the facing is gonna be attached. Uh, on the top, I do wanna try and get it all uh, the seams to match. I don't care if it's a little bit wavy uh, board to board, but I want to get the seams to line up and get rid of, of course, the glue. So I got my respirator ready to go. I got the anaconda all set up to suck off some of the air. That gets, this thing just blows it everywhere, so it's this will help. And I'll have the dust uh, filter going in the background here, just taking the stuff that's in the ambient air. Right before I do that, I'm going to change that filter. Be right back. Okay, filters on the air cleaners uh, swapped out. Uh, I forgot to mention, I, I have a cloth down here on the table. It keeps the piece from moving around uh, while I'm sanding it. Uh, that's the only reason for it.
Yep, I caved. I went for the belt sander. It was just it just does a faster job of taking out really uh, unevenness. And yeah, it did okay. Now I'll come back with the palm sander. Still the eighty grit because this was sixty on the belt sander. So I come back with uh, eighty grit and just kind of clean up some of those marks that the belt sander left. But I did a nice job of clearing that up. So I'll go after this surface with the belt sander as well, and then finish up with the uh, palm sander. So there's our piece. I'm always amazed at, uh, even though there are nail holes and, and fills in this, that came from a pallet. The wood just looked like crap when it, you know, the raw, the raw wood off the pallet, but it's, it's still quite beautiful underneath you. Never judge a book by its cover, right? Or beauty's only skin deep. This is beautiful underneath. Okay, um, there'll be a little bit of uh, filling to do. I have another little hole here on the edge, so I'll adjust, you know, take care of that. And then we'll get ready to put some, uh, um, we'll sand this up uh, finer with uh, up to 120, possibly 180, but I think I'll probably stop at 120 because we'll put a coat of primer on it and then sand that. But uh, I think this piece is almost done. That little bit of filler, sanding to 120, and then uh, we can start the assembly. In the meantime, I'm gonna go work on the uh, face. That should have had a chance to set, so I'm gonna sand that off. So for sanding this piece, I certainly don't wanna set it down like that and, you know, on a flat surface and put strain on it. So <clears throat> I'm using one of the cutoffs propping it up a little bit so that it can sit on that. And now I can sand it on that surface and that'll give it a little bit more support. So I'm pleased with that for a face finish. And um, now just use the palm sander to get it a little bit smoother. There's a bit of an issue here that I'm gonna to need to address. Uh, and then uh, we can then focus on assembly. So where the previous video was called uh, Rough Cuts, and I call this rough finish. Anyway, that's, I think I'll probably call that a video for today. Uh, I'll do a little bit more cleaning up here. Uh, tomorrow we'll focus on the assembly of the table. Thanks very much for watching everyone. Please like and subscribe. Really appreciate you coming to stop, uh, you stopping by the channel and having a, a view at the video. So really, really appreciate it. See you on the next one.